Hey what's up everyone and welcome to Daily Code Buffer. In this video we are going to learn about the web 3.0 or it might also call as web 3. So we'll be understanding what is web 3.0, we'll be also understanding the history of the internet, what is web 1, what is web 2 and why the evaluation happened and why now the next revolution is happening in the web technologies and generally the web. So without any wasting time, let's get started. Now if you have heard about the web 3 technologies, the cryptocurrencies, NFTs and everything, that's all good. If you know about it, that's all good. But if you don't know about it, and if you just heard about it, then this video will cover everything that you should know about the Web3. Now to understand this revolution, we need to go back to the history and learn about the internet. What is the evolution that happened? So let's first understand what is Web1 and how the internet started. Now, as of you know that the internet evolution started around 30 years back in around 1990s. Okay. So in the 1990s, when the internet started, all the big companies, big organizations, those started creating the websites. So at that time, creating the web pages and to be on the internet was just a static thing. You can just create a websites or a web page and everyone can see those websites or can see those information. So the end users or the majority of the users were just a consumers of the con content. So you can just read the content. You can just go through the websites which are there available. So it's just like the magazine at that time, right? So it was just a way to publish all the information on the internet where everyone can see those information. It was just about that. So you cannot interact with the web pages created earlier at those particular times. So it was just the static pages at that particular time, only text contents and some of the image contents as well. So you can just read everything. You can see everything. And as there were no interactions with the websites in the web one in the starting of the era, so there were not a huge opportunities for a user to monetize it or to have a revenue stream from those particular websites because you cannot interact it. You cannot have ads on them. You cannot post contents, anything, right? So that was the web one. And due to this limitation, the next era happened. The next revolution happened. That was the web 2.0. So web 2.0 changed the entire course of the internet. So that was the time around early 2000, around 2003, 2004, where social media was booming. So around that time, the user who were just consuming the content changed from consuming the content to creating the content. You have the ability to put everything what you want on the internet. So we have seen this revolution and we have lived this revolution. So now if you see everyone is creating content and everyone is consuming content, you are consuming the content right now, which I am creating, right? So this has changed everything with the ability for the users to create and consume contents. And this everything comes with a cause as well. So there is always a disadvantages as well when there is a revolution in the technology as well. So let's talk about that. So the first thing I want to talk about is the tech giants. So if you see Google, Facebook, Twitter, Microsoft, all these tech giants controls the internet. So what happens is most of the services from these tech giants are free to use. And what it takes in return is your data. And if you use any other web applications or websites as well, what we do generally is we try to log in with the same account that we have. They give the ease to log in with the Google, Twitter, Facebook, and we being lazy, we try to use those functionalities. We just log in with the Google or Facebook, whatever the ease of use that we can get from that particular website, that's the least amount of barrier to get into the web application because we don't have to go to the hassle of creating the account and log in with the account. We already have our centralized Google account or Facebook account or any other account that we have already created. We'll just try to log in with that particular account and we are into that website. Now what these tech giants do is they collect all the information. They collect each and everything what we do. They know each and everything about like which particular products I have searched, where I was at what particular time. All this data are been collected and all this data are been shared to the advertisers and that's the major revenue streams for most of the tech giants. So all these things comes with a disadvantage as well as all the tech giants are controlling everything. So there is a centralized system for it, right? So there is a lot of data that has been controlled by the all these huge companies. So all this data is been handled is been owned by the all these tech giants. You don't you don't own those data. So suppose there is some issue and there is a misconduct while using those application. They have the right to terminate your account because they own the account, they own the all the information. You don't own the information. You are just sharing the information and you are just consuming the information. Everything is centralized at that particular point, at that particular end. So this is something a major concern in the web too, that is the centralization and the censorship that comes along the byproduct of the centralization and those tech giants owning the data. So next thing is the privacy. So as you don't own your data, you don't know where this particular 
tech giants are selling your data, right? Because they could be selling the data to any of the companies in any of the format. And all those particular feeds, you would be seeing that according to the activities that you have done on the internet, you will be seeing all the different ads and all the different promotions and everything. And you might have seen a lot of news around a lot of companies as well like this particular amount of users data has been leaked and all those information right so this is all the concerns about the privacy in the current web 2 now when there is a disadvantages then there would be a new revolution coming to solve those disadvantages to solve all the problems that we have in the current infrastructure current technologies right so with the emerging technology like blockchain there was an idea behind to move the paradigm shift to the web3 technologies now the base behind the web3 is blockchain and blockchain works on the cryptography so if you want to learn more about the cryptography and blockchain then do let me know in the comment section below i'll try to create the videos on that as well now with the basis of blockchain web3 inherits that property that is the decentralization of everything so currently in the web2 era you saw that everything is centralized with the help of blockchain in the web3 everything is decentralized so any of the tech giants don't own every data that has been decentralized across all the different peer networks you might have heard about the torrent as well right so torrent is a peer-to-peer -peer network where the data has been stored across the different peers and it creates the network and all the information can be accessed blockchain works on the cryptography and it creates a network decentralized network where all the data can be stored and all the data can be accessed so in web3 technology whatever the data has been created is been owned by the user itself so for any data that you create you will have a token that is the nft that is non-fungible token created and that particular token will define that you own this particular data all the information will be tied up to that particular token so that is something unique to you and it is available across the entire blockchain network and everyone can see that information everyone knows that that particular data belongs to you so let's take the example of this particular youtube video i have uploaded this on youtube platform so this video is in the centralized form in the youtube servers right Be currently i don't own this particular video suppose by tomorrow if youtube goes down also I don't have access to this particular video and I'm sure that's not going to happen touch wood but if that happens everything is lost but if I would have created the same video in the web 3 using the blockchain network I would have got the NFTs for it I would have created the NFTs for that particular video and there would be endless opportunities if I would have created the NFT so what I could have done is if I would have uploaded the video in the web 3 YouTube okay if the YouTube is on blockchain if I would have uploaded with that NFT that this particular video is on YouTube then I would have that token for it. And whatever the activities happen on that particular video, all the views, likes, comments, everything, all the things are tied to that particular token. Suppose if I want to move that entire video to the another platform, then I could have done that easily because I could have just swapped the token that is possible using the website technology, using the blockchain network, but that is not possible using the current web tools. So that is the biggest advantage that I can see in the web3 so web3 is not ready yet there are a lot of disadvantages as of now in the web3 but all the people are working towards to resolve all those particular disadvantages and come with a solution where everything can work easily because in the web2 if you have signed up for any of the websites and they all own your data all the data has been centralized and if you lost anything then there is a possibility to recover all those data they all give the services to recover your data suppose if you forgot your credentials details then there is an option to get your details back to recover your account but in web3 all those details all the authentication is been done using the wallet so your wallet is the one thing that you would be using to log into every application that has been developed on the web3 now if you lost that wallet there is no way that you can get your data back so getting the ownership back of your data to yourself this is a another thing that we have to take care of it like your credentials and every details is also owned by you so you have to take care of everything you have to save all these details if you lost that detail everything is gone the next thing i can think of is the cost of operations all these tech giants have a huge amount of servers and all those servers have been maintained by them and they earn revenue by the advertisements based on your data so they have the ability to run all those huge servers and serve all the content but in web3 everything is decentralized everything is run on the peer networks and the cost of operation for that is not something that everyone can bear now if you've heard about minting nfts buying nfts or selling nfts there is a amount of fees that you have to pay to the network that is the gas fees so that gas fee is nothing but the amount that you pay to the entire network to run the cost of the operations because there are miners who are constantly running this network and 
giving all the computing power to process all the information on the blockchain so those miners will be getting the rewards based on the computing power that provides so this way all the entire network is been handled and you would have seen that it's very costly for now so there might be some solution about this in the future so let's be optimistic for that the next thing is the censorship how would you control the censorship in the web 3 because in web 2 companies own the data so censorship for them is very easy like if you have heard about many things like some of the accounts were been deactivated by twitter or by facebook or by instagram so as they own the data as everything is centralized they can censor all the data also but in web 3 there is a no way to control the censorship because every particular user owns the data so this might be very interesting thing to see who calls a shot to censor all this data so that is something that is a big problem that i see now and most of the people also see so that is something that to look for and the web 3 is here the revolution is here so sooner or later everything might be shifting to the web 3 many things have already started and many things are already on the way to move towards the web 3 so you have to decide you are a pro web 3 or not and if you have any thoughts and any comments about web 3 and all the buzzwords around it do let me know in the comment section below we can have a discussion around it and we can create another video covering all those particular points and we can have a one to one chat as well around this so that's what i want to share today if you want to learn more about the cryptocurrency blockchain and everything then do let me know in the comment section below i'll try to create the videos on that as well i'll try to create the videos on how to create the blockchains how to create the cryptocurrencies how to create the decentralized apps and everything i am in the learning phase now for that but once i get the hang of it i will share the information with you that what i have learned till then so that's been it in this video if you like this video give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos also, you can click on the join button and support this channel as well. That's all. I will see you in the next video. Till then, happy coding. Bye-bye.